guys, Stobby on Fanon back again with episode 3 of Abduction. Things really started to heat up at the end of the last episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got this little cart thing going. Now, we're going to drive along and use it to zap things with. If memory serves, the blue laser removes red items. Uh, such as those shimmering red rocks we saw. Yeah, hitting the road. Now we'll just have to see where the tracks are, because we've been moving these tracks around. Uh, is this even going to help? <laughs> I don't even know if we're supposed to be doing this. Go any further? This isn't going to help as far as I'm concerned. Turn the laser on. Nope. Uh, well that's a mistake. No. Nope. We need to back this thing up. Uh, okay, right. I, I see, I see, I see. Um, okay, I'm with the program now. Okay, here we go. We want to go right. We'll just have to hop out. Lick the switch. And we should be going right now. Where's this going to take us though? And where exactly do we want to go? We want to... We're going to need to turn it around. So we're going to have to reverse... How do we turn this thing around? First question. Hmm. Because currently we can only get it facing the rear way. I want to get the front face towards these rocks. How the hell are we going to do that? If we reverse it all the way up here. Uh, gets us back here. Facing this way. Doesn't help. Okay, let's think about this. We need to find where the tracks loop. Looks like this is where the tracks loop. Uh, it's not going to help us to crash through here. I don't think if we even can crash through there. That'll be worth a try. So, oh, sorry guys, I'm just figuring out where we're going to have to go here to... Be able to get the f we need to get this train car turned around. Can we do it this way? Because we're going to come facing this way. We can always reverse here, but that doesn't help us. Uh, this also doesn't help us. It's going to be worth trying to see if we can crash through or zap open that, uh, that bit of corrugated iron. Because currently we can only get it to reverse. You know, unless we can turn it around on its axle. Which it doesn't look like we can do. So we reverse it this way. Going up here, I don't think it's going to help reversing it up here. Nope. So I'm just working out how we're going to reverse it along this way. Doesn't help us because we want to get it turned around to zap there. Unless we can turn the head around, the laser around that much, but it's worth a try. Uh, we can still reverse it along here. It'll be reversing, it'll be reversing. Turn it around and then it'll be going forward here. Which would then let us reverse this way. Basically do J turn. Get it to face this way again. Okay. Although, I don't know. Enough thinking. Let's do. Learn by doing. Give the old turn around. Oh, wait, whoops, wrong way. Ah, success. So where's this going to take us? Uh, we don't want to go this way, do we? 
on, let's just see what happens here if I flick that switch around. Probably nothing because of where we are. This way. Stop. Get out. Click a tram line. Doesn't look like I did anything. Come on, there we go. To see if we can get the laser to point that way. Aha! Success! Triumphant. Now that should help. Ooh, did that leave some debris there that we haven't seen before? Well, I can't get out here. I hope there isn't a battery on this thing and I can keep using it. Okay, what do we have here? A broken water top thing, it looks like. I imagine this is going to be what we need to get this thing turned around. Also, let's take a second to note what the address is of this house, because I remember seeing a note saying that the code is this address backwards. So it's 1436, so that'll make the code 6341. Remember that. Always refer to our helpful photograph. I remember seeing a keypad in the last episode, but we'll go back there at some point. thoroughly confused as to what it is we're doing. Oopsie, wrong way. Now, I'm encouraged by how articulated the... Oops. Was. We clearly can't get out. There. should get us there, and then when we come forward again, it should take us here. Should. Door. Won't be pushed, can it? No. This doesn't work now. We'll just flick this switch around and try to go around that way, see if that helps. There it is. I've been in this mysterious little land for a short while, but I've already got myself a ride. Oh, come on. Doesn't like the uphill. I understand that. Vision isn't great, I can't really see much. Oh, hang on. Should be able to shoot those rocks through here. Bleep bloop. Uh, okay. Two. By small by whoopsie. At them. So there's the gap. Rocks there. Did that work? It did not. Angle there is off a little bit. Oh, but, but, yes, right. I right, turn this thing around is the question. I think I'm going to need to because I got to reverse it. Yep. Um, do we investigate that cave now, or I mean, we here, we may as well. Yeah. 
When I first saw those shimmering red rocks, I had an intuition that they were just illusions that we can get them away somehow. I was correct, sir. Another broken projector thing. And... Dead end. Oh, that's a letdown. Still. Proof of concept, at least. More creepy wasps coming out of that stuff. So, where is this going to take us back? Uh, and how many other sets of red rocks are there that we need to zap away? I mean, there isn't a set of objectives anywhere. Oh, high speed. So I'm not even sure exactly what it is we should be trying to do here. I'm going to have to get out here. Let's flick the switch. Get me around the other way. These aren't red rocks, are they? These are legit rocks, yeah. I wonder if it's worth getting onto this track going that way. I think it is. Give it a try? Give it a try. First look where it is that it takes us. Yeah, that'll take us along to this house. And potentially up here. Yeah, because we'll run along facing forwards here. I don't see any red rocks that we need to zap or anything here. But we can then reverse to go along the other way. And are there more red shimmering, ro shimmering rocks here? I don't know. No, there's not. So it would not be worth it going up here in our little car. Maybe we saw more red rocks. On the other side, like where the generator was. Hmm. Yeah, I think we did. In any case, let's take our little train. Yes, there's definitely more red rocks down by the water. Definitely. a totally sweet ride. Ugh, I have to change this again here. What a pain. There you go. I'm still thoroughly intrigued by this game. It is great. Take a look around to see if we're going to see any shimmering red rocks in range of this thing. Oh, hang on, is this where we want to go? Yes! Ramming speed! Go! Ah. Well, that was a letdown. <laughs> I'm going to turn this little bastard. Switcher. And this is approaching a bit of admin now. This is just work. But needs to be done. Should get us on the right track. Right, that was bad. Bad pun is bad. That's not the way I want to go. Switch could take us right this time. Where we go? Ooh, can I shoot that laser with our blue laser? Is that gonna do anything?
just occurred to me now. That was hardly on purpose. I guess we've nuked this whole bleeding dome around us. What, what that's going to achieve, I have no idea. How do I get this little plane turned around? Okay, doesn't matter. These aren't shimmering red rocks. And what have I done by <laughs> turning down then let's go talk to CW because he said something about that damn laser and about getting the dome down. So I'm pretty sure he's going to want to talk to us now. Although, am I going to have to change? Don't go left. Damn it. Oh no, wait. I have to reverse there. Nothing catastrophically has changed since so taking the dome down. We haven't died in the so That's something at least. I think like it's both good and bad that there's no set list of objectives like go here, do this, talk to this person. You know, like in Deus Ex where you have primary and secondary objectives. I still don't know what I'm doing half the time. And that's kinda cool. You just gotta, you know, remember what it is you're doing. Bonk. Fuck our little laser car back in the garage. See what CW has to say about our handiwork. Oh, yo, CW, what up? Perhaps we should go and investigate one of the edges of where the dome is. But I want to try that uh, combination that we got on that keypad. These aren't red rocks, they're the normal solid red rocks. And that one door there is still locked, isn't it? I don't know how we're going to get that to come down. to think about. Ooh, butterflies. Pretty. But folks, I got momentarily distracted by the pretty butterflies. I keep thinking I'm hearing like sounds of activity off in the distance. Special this game is making me insane. Well, more insane. I think. Yeah, we're going to need to get up there, I think. How we do that, who knows? Who knows? Well, now we can rotate this big sphere, but for what dark purpose? I know not. Nothing much we can do around here. I haven't seen anywhere that we can get into this little complex or board it up. I can't get our little laser tram through here, so that's not going to help. Generator's still humming away nicely. Anything through here? Nope. No smoking. Can't open it. There's no button to open this door is there. That robot thing makes me uneasy. What the hell is it? So the keypad I think was up there. Uh, nope. Must have been just behind the tram. What 
the hell is this thing though? Big stone sphere. Okay, focus. Let's not get distracted. One thing at a time. One mystery at a time. So the keypad was through there, I believe. There's nothing in here that's worth taking or really looking at. Some boxes. Nothing of note in there either. It looks like we can get here, yeah, but who knows how we can reach that little area. There's clearly something going on here, but what it is and how to get there. I don't know. Ah yes, there's a little lookout point. Saw this all last episode. Can't remember exactly where I saw the keypad. Aha! Yes. 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 Okay, so review photos. Uh where is this photo? So it's six three four one. Six three four one. Hey -o! And we're in. What the hell is this? Okay, so here's the complex. Leader Lake fuel supplies. Yep, the rail yard. Yep. Bosk tree. Battery shop. CWs. Water source. That's where we came in from. Cemetery. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, nothing new to us. What the hell? For a second I thought that was a swastika. But no, the number 15 I think. Random doorknobs and junk. More papers, more reading to be done. Okay, here we go. So, seed information. What do we know about these holy crap seeds? There are ambassador seeds and collector seeds. Well guys, this is a story focused game, and what about the lore? So, I'm going to read through this. Ambassador Seeds. Ambassador Seeds were first documented about 150 Earth years ago. They occur about once every 400 days if the trees remain healthy. Natural seed swaps occur between pairs of seeds that, we now know, drop simultaneously from healthy trees in paired sphere. When each seed was touched by species and sphere the swap occurred, sending an ambassador from each sphere to the paired sphere. The location of the swap is defined by the locations of the pairs of seeds. After the first swap, the seeds recharged quickly, allowing for a quick return. First meetings were intense but naturally short. It was quite a surprise for both the Mofang and us. Over time, the seeds required more time to recharge, producing longer visits between species. Okay, so some, some sort of alien race, and the seeds we saw are what are making humans and these aliens, the Mofang, come into contact. Collector seeds. Everyone who arrives is familiar with the collector seeds. The bright light that we were all drawn to right before the event that brought us here is a collector seed. What new arrivers may not be aware of is that these seeds, like all seeds, come in pairs. When the tree drops a collector seed on the ground, it signals that its twin has begun its quest for a new being. That search may take hours or it may take years. When an appropriate situation, a natural threat of death, is found, the seed activates and swaps a smaller but varying sized sphere from the earth, or whatever appropriate homeworld here to Hunrath. As Hunrath becomes more populated, we would watch for a newly dropped collector seed, collect it and place it in the entry canyon area. This allowed us to provide a more predictable entry experience for new arrivers and provide a single area to collect any resources that may have come along with the new arriver. Unlike ambassador seeds and mother seeds, collector seeds do not seem to survive. The inner core is spent, leaving only the lifeless outer husk. It makes me wonder, so it says something about it's always paired, so the seed brought us here, does that mean that one of these aliens was sent to Earth? Mother Seeds, postulated but unverified, first suggested by Alima Hamza, the notion of Mother Seeds extrapolates the behavior of the lesser seeds to a super seed. 
She posited that the process that actually created the paired spheres was similar to all other swaps, but on a much grander scale. The idea is that two seeds from a mother tree were scattered on the galactic winds to find appropriately similar environments. When matches were found, some process was triggered that swapped large portions of landscape between vastly different worlds. Alima further noted that the tree's locations in the center of the sphere suggested that the trees grew from these mother seeds. Because of the similarities, it has been conjectured that re-swapping the entire environmental spheres might be possible with a larger scale version of the Ambassador's Seed Machine. That's the end of the book. <clears throat> oh, wow. A lot to take in. Okay, hang on one second. I'm, I'm reading from, from right to left. Uh, probably doesn't matter. Communication. Talking with our neighbors. We take communication for granted, even with the very languages we find here in Unrath. But when we fun suddenly find ourselves among other intelligent species who don't share our culture, history, DNA, or vocal cords, it requires a huge amount of effort for the beginning of rudimentary chatting. This quick overview will set the stage for what to expect when communicating with our neighbors. Oh my god. Mofang. The Mofang were the first non-humans we met. With at least some level of similar physical, vocal generating abilities, they picked up human words quickly. This early mimicry resulted in what the species became to be called. Even though they were able to mimic single words and simple phrases, it became evident over the years that huge grammatical differences were not easily overcome. Some have proposed that the difficulty may have arisen because the Mofang insisted on attempting to learn every human language and as a result were never able to lock onto any consistent grammatical structure. Nevertheless, in spite of the rudimentary sentence construction, it has been very easy to communicate and it has been unnecessary for us to learn their language beyond a few simple phrases and proper names. If you'd like to learn to more about like to learn more about communication within the Mofang, please contact Tam. So typical of humanity to not bother learning. Holy crap. Well, I can't help but think that all this stuff is gonna be necessary. We're gonna have to read all of it. What I will do, if you're not interested in listening to me read through all this stuff, I'll put a link in the video where you can just skip past all the reading. Let's press on. The Valayan. The Valayan have presented a particular communication challenge. From what we can gather, they provide sounds using two law produce sounds rather, using two large reed-like structures inside opposite sides of their heads. The vibrations generated are channeled to resonance chambers in their skulls where they are combined into a complex low frequency dual tone. The low frequency bitonal sounds are not only hard for humans to hear and resolve but impossible for us to mimic. And the Valayans hearing is also oriented towards low frequency so they are unable to hear most of sounds associated with human speech. Therefore communication with the Valayan has relied on technology. They have adopted consoles, which the Valayan frequently control with vocalization, for use by other species. Over the years, some individuals of other species, including a few humans, have learned to communicate very effectively using this method. Humans have been able to pick out some higher frequency characteristics of certain key Valayan words over the years. And although we can't speak to them in a way that the Valayans can understand, we are occasionally able to hear and recognize these words when spoken distinctly by the Valayan. Like to learn more about communication with the Valayan, please contact Vito. The Arai. None of the stages of the Arai morphology have any vocalization apparatus. Because of the obvious synchronization of the barnacle flash and the ability of the horns to provide for and address the needs of the polyox, it was assumed that the species could communicate effectively. It was not until Farley began to spend large amounts of time in the polyarc antechamber that the first clues to this communication became evident. After months of research, Farley began to have limited success with receiving some kind of simple messages that were coming from the polyarc. It is apparent now that the polyarc had been attempting to communicate the entire time, but they themselves had been experimenting with various channels until they finally got a response from Farley. After this breakthrough, Others were able to tune in to the polyarchs and learn to listen. Both the polyarchs and the pawns have a simple organ that can sense human vocal frequency. 
enabling them to sense simple responses from humans. But over the years, Farley was able to learn to speak to the polyox via a related form of extrasensory transmission. If you'd like to learn more, talk to Farley. Alrighty. I think we'll call this episode a break here. We've obviously got a lot more reading to do. I don't want to, you know, oh my god, look at all of this. Oh, you guys are death with my reading. My voice is getting a bit scratchy now, so we'll take a little break, and when we come back, we'll keep plowing through ahead with all of this reading. See if we can make sense of any of this stuff, and finish exploring this little room. I keep saying it every episode, but my god, this game's amazing. I love this game. I still don't know what it is. But it's fascinating. I love it. And there's clearly a whole backstory and subculture and all sorts of interesting stuff going on. Alrighty everyone, this is Abduction, episode 3. I'm stopping it for 9, and as always, thanks for watching.